him a minister. Amen. Let us bless each other. Be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. Hallelujah. What makes me clean and what gives me true hope it is the blood of Christ. I bet you in the name of the Lord, at this time, may you truly hold on to only Jesus Christ. Today, it is the grace that is given from through the cross. So we are going inside. The Passion Week. So as we go inside of the week of uh, the week of the Passion, may you truly experience uh, the work of God. Do you truly believe in God? Many of the believers attend church, but they do not believe in God. That is why Jesus said, At the, in the end times, will there be people who believe in God? Uh, look at Europe. Right now, the younger generations are all leaving church. And the churches have turned into nightclubs and a bar or a museum. And many people are saying that, can I uh, undo the baptism that I received? They do not believe in God, and they have never believed. But they believe in the mythical God, and they just believe in the God that they think that gives comfort, and they just know it as a religion. We must question ourselves, do I truly believe in God? People do not believe that Jesus is the Christ. They just see a cross as one of the incidents, but they have no relation with it. Because they do not believe in the cross, they do not believe in the resurrection as well. So in Germany, there is a theology of death of God theology. So it means that God is dead. And there is speaking of resurrection, and there is speaking of resurrection of their thoughts. It means that they don't believe in God. And some theologians say that the Pentateuch of Moses is just a myth. It means that they're going up against the creation of mankind. And they do not believe in that mankind are the spiritual beings made in the image of God. So they do not believe in the spiritual problem that where they're separated from God. And they also do not believe in the being, Satan, which made us be separated from God. Then there is a need for us to look back inside of our walk of faith. And we could think to ourselves, how many people truly give the true confession of faith? I'll tell you again. How many people are truly giving their true confession of faith? They have heard it and they just say it. But how many people truly 
confess that Jesus is the Christ inside of my life with our spirit and with our soul. In the second service, we will have a baptism take place. So there is two sacraments. So it is baptism and communion service. And here, there is the mystery of where we can truly have victory spiritually. The true blessings that are given to us, we are able to enjoy that through baptism and communion service. People who are receiving baptism or entering into our church, they gave their confession of faith. And I was able to see that many people receive baptism, but they do not truly know the meaning. Because people tell them to just receive baptism, that's why they just receive it. But because they do not know what baptism is, they don't know the blessings behind it. And they do not live the life of a person who has received baptism. That is why even though they have received baptism, they lose hold of all of the blessings. Then what is baptism? We're publicly proclaiming that Jesus is my Christ to the public. In the past, money, my fame, or wealth was the master of my life, but now Jesus Christ is the master of my life, and confessing that is baptism. And the moment we confess, then God calls me His own. It means that God will give us all of the blessings and answers. But we must truly take a look at our lives. Although we attend church, do I truly confess that Jesus is Christ? Many people, if good things happen to us, then we are able to believe in God. But if we are falling into conflicts, problems, or hardships, then we say we don't know God. But for us, even though we have conflicts or problems or hardships, it does not matter. Because in midst of that, the sovereignty, the plan, and the word of God is fulfilled through that. So people, people of faith are the people who believe the word of God. So all of our Hanan church members who truly have the faith where we believe in God. And I truly hope you guys become the people who truly confess and believe that Jesus is Christ. Then where must we return to? We must return to the basics, the fundamentals. We must believe God as God. Most of the people just listen to the sermon that they want to hear. Oh, I'm in the midst of hardship. Then they just want to listen to a message where which they give, uh, where this hardship is solved. Yes, we can give the message of comfort and hope. Then for people who are sick, 
there is only one thing that they want. And they just want to receive healing of their sicknesses. That's not a wrong thing. And it's not a bad thing. But most of the people just want to listen to the sermon that they want to hear. And they're just used to that. Joseph was sold off as a slave. Though he was young, he, there were times where he could have grown weary. But Joseph never prayed, Oh, when will God set me free from this crisis? And he never, wanted, he never prayed about, Oh, when can I live a good life? He wanted to know what God wants to do through this incident. And as time went on, the answer came. So it is Genesis 45.5. And now do not be in distress or angry with yourselves because you saw me. For God sent me before you to preserve life. To Joseph, who knew what God wanted to do, God blessed Joseph. The word of God is not something that we want to hear. We, we must be able to know what God wants to do through the problem that is given to us. Believing in God means that we believe in what God emphasizes. Yes, it is important for us to read the Bible a lot, but through the Bible, we must be able to see what God is trying to emphasize. So you guys came to worship. There's no one who brought their refrigerator with them. There's no one who brought their stove. There's no need to bring that. You just need to know the password to your house. I'll tell you an easier example. We have money inside of our accounts. We just have to know the password. Then we're able to withdraw the money which is mine, and use it. But no matter how much money is in, inside of our accounts, if you do not know the password, then we cannot use that money. What, does, what do I want to tell you? There are many things inside of the Bible, and there are many histories there, and there are many stories of the figures, and there are many miracles inside of it. But what God wants to tell us is not those things. There is only one reason this Bible is recorded. It is John 20, 31. For this Bible is recorded to only speak of Jesus Christ. And through Him, to give life. If you lose hold of the word of God, which what God wants to emphasize, yes, it could become a help to us, but that can never become the true life and true power. I went to this Japanese camp once, and they were going to a house to house and to camp and I was led to this one household and the person uh, the wife of that house was a believer and the husband ran a sushi shop but he did not believe in God and he knows so much about the Bible though 
He always reads the Bible, so he knows so much about it. But he does not know Christ. And to those people, Bible is just an ordinary book, but it's not life to that person. And many other people know the Bible. Even Hemingway, he said that uh, Bible is a very renowned book, but they do not know the true life. Many people receive some kind of power from the Bible while reading it, but they just see that. The see Bible as an ordinary book. What do I want to tell you? We must be able to hold on to the things of the Bible, what God is trying to emphasize inside of the Bible. So how much, how many years must we attend church to receive salvation? How much do we have to pray? Or how much do we have to do good deeds? To receive salvation. Bible does not say that. No matter how much we attend church, no matter how much we pray, no matter how much we do good deeds, if it is not for Christ, we cannot receive salvation. In John 1 12, it says, But to who, all who did receive him, who believe in His name, He gave the right to become the children of God. So we must know Christ whom God emphasizes. So what is the core of the word? It is that Jesus is the Christ. In the Old Testament, God has promised that He will send us Christ. In the New Testament, is that God has sent us the Christ whom He has promised. So what does it mean? So what is our walk of faith? The walk of faith is knowing that Jesus is the Christ. Why Jesus Christ has come? Why did He have to die on the cross? And why did He have to res resurrect? And why is He with us through the Holy Spirit? And knowing that and getting to know that is our walk of faith. So we must find the gospel of cross and the resurrection. Many of the people or many of the believers know about the cross. But they do not truly know cross. Even the non-believers, they wear a necklace with the cross. But do they truly know the meaning of the cross? And the non-believers know what Christmas is, but they do not know why Christ came. What am I trying to say? They know the cross, but they do not know that Christ had to die for us, and they do not believe that they're set free from the destiny and they do not believe, uh, they're not able to enjoy this inside of their lives. That is why they can believe the power of the cross. If it isn't for the cross, then there's no way for us to have solution to our original sins. If Christ did not die on the cross, there is no resurrection and there is no way for us to become the children of God. Then the incident of the cross, it is the gospel over gospel. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you truly be able to know the gospel of the cross. Even the disciples of Jesus, they could not accept the fact that he had to die on the cross. That is because they thought the, um, the cross is a curse and it's just an executional tool. And they were 
they had this misunderstanding about the cross. The disciples followed after Jesus during his earthly ministry. And Jesus kept on continuously speaking about the death of the cross, but the disciples were not interested. And if you see in the book of Mark, Jesus says, Why did Jesus come? He has come as a ransom for many. But they did not know the incident of the ransom. If at least one person asked, then they would have known, but not one was interested in this. They were only interested in the places that they will be able to sit in if Jesus becomes king. Peter confessed that Jesus, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And at that time, Jesus spoke and gave the word that he will be crucified on the cross. But what did Peter say? He said he will block Jesus from dying. And he said he will protect Jesus. So he did not know what cross is. There is something that God has emphasized since the beginning of Adam and even before time began. And when Adam died from sins and transgressions, there is something that God has emphasized and that was the offspring of woman will crush the head of the serpent and gave uh, the leather clothes. It was a time where everybody was sighing and was resenting. But there is one thing that God has emphasized, and it was the Passover, the blood of the Lamb. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you truly have this experience of the blood, the gospel of the cross. Even though we believe in Jesus, there are times where we fall into conflicts and trials. We are that weak. Even the Apostle Paul, who was an evangelist, he said that there are two laws that are fighting inside of him. If you see in Romans 7, 24, it says, Wretched man I, that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? So he was speaking about the two hearts that is inside of him where he wants to believe in God and truly follow after the word of God. But he was being dragged by sin. And seeing that, he said, wretched man that I am. Yes, because of the physical problems, we can have conflicts inside of our walk of faith. But Paul confessed. This is the confession of Paul. He says, I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die every day. In Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Do you have conflicts? Do we have hardships? Do we have problems? Entrust everything to Christ, who is our master. May Christ live inside of me. I have been crucified with Christ. But because I'm still alive, we have no choice but to have conflicts and face problems. We must entrust everything to Christ. All of my spiritual problems are crucified on the cross. 
and we are a new creation. So the cross gives life. So revive, restore myself. We must not be uh, caught by our past problems and scars. We must every day receive strength. There are many people who have grown weary where they cannot even give worship. Truly hold on to Christ who has solved all of our problems on the cross. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you truly restore yourself going back to the fundamentals. Our choir sang today. It's not just the blood of the cross. It is the complete blood of the cross. It's setting us free. And this blood doesn't just uh, give me victory, but has given me true victory. Secondly, cross is the grace of God. If you see in verse 20 today, making peace by the blood of His cross. What does this mean? Through the blood of the cross, life is given to us. It is saying, it is speaking of our original sins being solved, and we are being set free from Satan. And God has restored, and He has restored the relations with God and us. How much can we understand people? All of the people is probably the same. They do not they're they do not want to be at a loss. But God is different. God has infinite love and infinite forgiveness. I committed sin, but Christ died for us and solved my sins. We are the people who give unbelief and fall into conflict and fall into trials. But still, God has given, me, given us salvation and is making us His child. So we must know the method of God or the, or the heart of God. Making peace through the blood of the cross. We are a precious being to God. God sees us most precious. And that is the peace between me and God. In Revelation 3.20 it says, it says, I am knocking on the door. Uh, whoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat, eat with him and he with me. And there is a picture that is drawn with this. In front of Jesus, there is no doorknob. Only inside there is the doorknob. What does that mean? It means that I have to open up the door in order for Jesus to come in. People who do not know Jesus truly open up the doors to your heart. And people who know Jesus make Jesus your master. When Jesus becomes your master, that's when God takes care of you. Behold, I am standing in front of the door knocking. And whoever hears my voice and opens the door, then I will go in into him and eat with him and he with me. 
This is the blessing that is given to us. And after uh, verse 20, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth in, or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cro his, his cross. What does it mean by on earth? It is talking about the physical things. It is talking about the physical things where all of the things are caught by the destiny, curses, and disaster. It's talking about Satan and in heaven making peace by the blood of his cross. God wants everybody to have true rest and he wants to he want us to go before Christ but many people when they fall into hardship they rely on people and that is the way for us to fall into depression when you're faced with a hardship don't seeking out for people go before Christ in the prayers of our elders, go to a person and go to other people and talk about your hardships. Yes, at that moment, you it might seem okay, but you're just falling into depression. And that does not, the word of people is not the answer. Don't rely on things where you, which does not give you um, give you solution. In verse 22 today, so he has presented us blameless, holy and blameless. I don't become holy by doing something. Through Christ meeting God, that itself is us becoming holy. It says we are blameless with the law, we can uh, condemn others, but the gospel gives strength to others and gives life to others. So this is the blessing that is given to us, blameless and above reproach before him. And it says he has now reconciled in his body. So we are now a being where we receive blessings from God. So truly go before God. May the gospel of the cross become the answer to my life. Do we have problems inside of relations? Or are things happening inside of our inside of our life? cross gives us life so bring everything before the cross and that is when the grace of God is abundant inside of us and there all of the forces of darkness crumble down repeat after me the cross is the grace of God every day hold on to the the cross, which is the answer to our life.
나 가정 후대를 살리고 교회와 현장을 살릴 수 있는 복음의 능력 